Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Uh, we're speaking to you from Vancouver. My name is Sue Taylor, and I'll be your host this evening. I thank you for your patience, uh, waiting for the, the webinar to begin. And um, while you can see the, the link to the SurveyMonkey, um, it would be uh, desirable if you would go online and complete this, the pre-survey, and there'll be a post-survey at the end of the presentation. We're showing this presentation through Adobe Connect, and you'll see a chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, this particular chat box won't be monitored, but if you want to say where you're from, uh, we'd be happy to see um, how far we've reached in, in, the, in the country. We've had people from as far as Newfoundland in the past. And for when question time happens after the presentation, please type the questions in the question box um, on the bottom left-hand area of your screen. Um, and the, those questions will be answered during the question and answer period at the end of the presentation. Uh, to avoid any background noises, I'll be muting the phones so all you'll hear is our guest speaker. The presentation will be about 45 minutes in length with about 15 to 30 minutes at the end for questions and answers. And it will also be recorded and posted to our website at a later date. I'd like to say thank you to our sponsor, Merck, who's provided funding for the presentation. And, and now on we go with our guest speaker. The learning objectives for the session today are to review how diabetes relates to hearing loss, to identify symptoms of diabetes related to hearing loss, and how to discuss and sorry and to discuss how to prevent and treat diabetes related hearing loss. Dr. Lee Chi is an award winning senior audiologist and practice lead for audiology at Vancouver General Hospital. He has sixteen years of experience in audiological practice, clinical research, and teaching. In his spare time, Dr. Chi is very involved in the community. He is currently on the Board of Directors for Speech, Language, and Audiology Canada. He was also a faculty member of UBC School of Speech and Audiology and is a co-founder of the Canadian Chinese Speech and Hearing Association. Dr. Chi, we're so happy to have you here this evening, um, and we're looking forward to hearing you. Um, OK, hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, Thank you for the introduction, Sue. So how about my voice? Is that uh, OK? And uh, I'd like to thank CDA, Canadian Diabetes Association, for giving me this a great opportunity to share um, the knowledge about diabetic hearing loss. And my res main responsibility at Vancouver General Hospital uh, is our, to provide hearing assessment amplification counseling, teaching medical and audiology students. Also, we do a lot of clinical research at Vancouver General Hospital. Tonight, and uh, we are here together, we're going to review the connections between hearing loss and diabetes. And also, we are looking at research uh, findings about audiological profile of diabetic hearing loss. Okay, I'm going to speak louder. Thank you for letting me know. And uh, also, we are going to discuss the effects of the hearing loss in your daily life. Also, one interesting, one important piece is how to keep your hearing healthy, how to keep you away from diabetic hearing loss. And in the end, if you have hearing loss, kind of solutions and treatment available for your hearing loss. Uh, is my uh, voice OK? I make it a little bit louder. If you uh, still need to be louder, please let me know. OK, thank you, Sue. And uh, so let's look at a few numbers. Diabetes is growing globally, increasing rapidly. Um, currently, this data are actually published in 2010. In 2010, there are 347 million people in the world have diabetes. And this number will go up rapidly by two thirds in the next 15 years. This is globally. Let's look at Canada. 
is a report from CDA, Canadian Diabetes Association. Canada is a tipping point of diabetes. Currently, more than 9 million Canadians, or one in four, are living with diabetes or pre-diabetes. And this number goes up to one in three in the next five years. So one in three Canadians, they are going to have diabetes or pre-diabetes in the next by 2020. Hearing loss is also a leading chronic conditions for elderly uh, North American people. And so for people over 60 years old, we can see one in three people have a hearing loss. Even for teenagers, American teenagers, one in five teenagers they have some type of hearing loss, especially with the popular of a personal MP3 players, iPad, iPhone, or other personal MP3 players. Teenagers listen to loud music constantly, uh, and they may put them at a high risk for noise-induced hearing loss. Both diabetes have hearing loss have a large number of patients. Is there a connection? As early as 1857, physician uh, Jordan, he was the first to suggest a relationship between diabetes and the hearing loss. He published a, a case study. About 60 years later, another physician, Edgar, he was the first to suggest a high frequency hearing loss may be related to uh, diabetes. A landmark study done by NIH, National Institute of Health, in 2008, showed that hearing loss is twice as common in people with diabetes. We are going to look at more details about this study. And people are well known some complications of diabetes, such as eyes problems, nerves problems, heart problems. Uh, kidney, skin problems. Hearing loss is an under-recognized complication. People with diabetes are high-risk population for hearing loss. Eye, eye, information, eye information and auditory information are the most the two important sensory inputs for people. Alan Taylor said that blindness separates people from things. Deafness separates people from people. So people, uh, patients with diabetes, they are at high risk population, high risk for both visual impairment and also hearing impairment. Why is that? Why people with diabetes, they are high risk population for hearing loss. Emperor Bone study showed that high blood pressure, high blood sugar may damage a very small structure in your cochlea, called the stria vascularis. This is a cross-sectional picture of our cochlea. I'm pointing to this place. This is the stria vascularis. It's very important for hearing because it's a driving force for mechanical transduction of hair cells. It turns our auditory information to the hearing nerve and the brain. High blood sugar may damage this part, stria vascularis. Therefore, people have a hearing loss. When we talk about hearing loss, we have a different types of hearing loss, and also the treatment for different types of hearing loss is different. Uh, this is a cross-sectional picture of our ear. I'm pointing to this part is the outer ear and the ear drum, the three ossicles behind the ear drum, and uh, this part, like snail, we call it the inner ear. We draw a line between middle ear and the in 
between the middle ear and inner ear. Any problem occurs in the outer ear and the middle ear. We consider it the conductive hearing problem. Any problem occurs in the inner ear and after. We consider a sensory hearing loss. And if a people have a both conditions, we call it mixed hearing loss. So there are three types of hearing loss, inductive hearing loss, sensory neural, and mixed. Different treatments are required for different hearing loss. For conductive hearing loss, the problem occurs in the outer ear and the middle ear. It likely can be treated by medications or surgeries. The problem in the inner ear and after we call it sensory neural hearing loss. Likely, patient need hearing aids or other assistive listening devices. Now we talk about people with diabetes. They are high risk population for hearing loss. The reason for that is because high blood sugar may damage a very small part in your cochlea. And also three types of hearing loss available. So what kind of the hearing loss people with diabetes, what kind of hearing loss they have? Let's look at this landmark study done by NIH. This study is really a large number of participants. And the first time they show a strong correlation between the level of the hearing loss and the duration of your diabetes. And also, they investigate hearing loss between controlled group and the people uh, uncontrolled group. They show significant difference in terms of the hearing loss. And the most important thing they show that even people with pre-diabetes are 30% higher risk for hearing loss. Pre-diabetes pre patient, they are their blood sugar higher than normal people. Uh, however, they are not reached, uh, not yet reached the uh, diagnostic criteria of diabetes. They are still high pop risk population for hearing loss. This picture shows a better, it's a better display how we see a hearing loss. The bottom line, the frequency represents from low frequency, such as from 500 hertz up to 1,000 hertz. And this vertical line is the mean threshold. Threshold means how low, the lowest sound you can hear. This study showed two groups. One is a group without diabetes, and the second group, people with uh, diabetes. When we talk about the hearing, we consider from very, very soft sound, such as negative 10 dB up to 25. This is a normal hearing range. And anything greater than 25 dB, we consider a hearing loss. You can see there's a big difference between two groups. For people with diabetes, they have a high frequency hearing loss, starting from 3,000 Hz up to 8,000 Hz, to show a hearing loss compared to the group without diabetes. Another study from uh, Handozo, they investigated the gender difference. They invested diabetes in female population group and also in male group. And also they choose the three uh, subjects, three types of subjects. One is the people without diabetes. Second group is uh, people with controlled diabetes. The last group is uh, people with, uh, with uh, uncontrolled diabetes. Vertical line also represents the hearing threshold. And uh, it shows right ear hearing average and the left ear uh, hearing threshold average. Significantly, more hearing loss, greater hearing loss, for people with uncontrolled diabetes. This is the, for the female subjects under 60 years old, significant differences 
between uh, non-diabetic group and the control group. Let's look at male group. Males group show no differences <laughs> any age or compared to the control level, according to the study. Why is that? It's probably, the researcher probably hypothesized that, that because uh, the male subject is more likely due to, you know, have worse hearing loss at the beginning, at the baseline, than the normal females. And the, uh, another theory is normal males' worse hearing could mask diabetes subtle effects in the younger, uh, noted in the younger female population. So that is the gender difference about diabetic hearing loss. How about age? This study is another study from uh, Uchuda uh, in 2010. It showed that diabetes reduced the hearing activity in middle-aged listeners more than in elderly listeners. So they affect middle-aged people more than elderly people. This study this study invested over 2,000 adults aged from 40 to 86 years old. And uh, they divided two groups. And what they found is diabetes affects high frequency hearing more strongly in the younger age group. So previously, we talked about diabetic hearing loss. There are high frequency hearing loss. And there are gender differences and also age differences. Diabetes affect uh, middle-aged people more than elderly uh, population. Now look at another interesting thing. It's uh, detection, temporal processing. We're looking at auditory processing ability. What is the meaning of processing? It means how you bring to analyze, to precise auditory information. For example, when we hear a sentence, we require not only the hearing, but also you need cognitive function. You bring power to understand or comprehend, comprehend the information. This study uh, look at two groups. One is a uh, non-diabetic group. The other one is the group with diabetes. Uh, you can see the group with diabetes, they need a longer gap threshold. You need a longer processing time. So it means um, when you talk to them, not only talk loudly, but people with diabetic hearing loss, they also need longer processing time. So need a longer time to process auditory information. In the past few slides, we look at the uh, features of diabetic hearing loss. We know the gender differences, age differences, the high frequency sensory near hearing loss, and how to keep your hearing healthy, how to prevent, how to keep you away from diabetic hearing loss. Remember, diabetes itself is not a leading cause of these uh, unwanted complications. Surely, manage the diabetes is the leading course. You need to manage, control your diabetes. That is the key point. How to keep your hearing uh, healthy? First, take your medications. Take your prescribed medications based on your physician's uh, recommendation. Have a balanced, healthy diet, doing exercise regularly. On the website of uh, CDA, Canadian Diabetes Association, there's uh, new tools available to take charge of your health. And they have a recommendation for you on diets. They have uh, a recommendation for your exercise. It's a really great, great website. A lot of helpful information for you. I encourage, I encourage everyone to look at uh, the CDA website, Canadian Diabetes Association website. Your exercise. So, there's a little cotton people here. Remember three word feet, frequency. So you need to exercise as if you exercise daily, every day, and also intensity. So the time 
half an hour a day will be great. Hearing loss is invisible. You can't touch a hearing loss. You don't see it. But how do you know? And hearing loss affects people silently. If you have the following one of the five symptoms, or some of them, you may have a hearing loss. It's hard to follow conversation in a restaurant or house. When there's a background noise around, it's difficult to follow a conversation. It's one of the symptoms. If someone tells you that, oh, you turn up TV too loud, that is a symptom. Or you have communication difficulties when you hear on the phone. Always ask people to repeat, uh, to repeat themselves. Uh, pardon me, what, pardon me? Uh, uh, what do you see? Or your partner, your friend complains. If you have one of these falling uh, signs or symptoms, you may have a hearing loss. Here is an example. The lady says, go to the store, lay down the mulch, get the kids at school, rent some movies, videos, and finish the rest of dishes. Gentlemen, what did he hear is, go, lay down, and get some rest. The lady thinks, oh, you have a selective hearing loss. Actually, the gentleman doesn't know what he's missing. When people have a hearing loss, you might not know what he's missing. Hearing loss plays a stress on both sides, not only on the speaker, but also for the listeners, because communication is a two-way street. And uh, let's look at untreated hearing loss. Because hearing loss is invisible, we don't see it, we don't touch it, it affects your life silently. So much, a lot of times, we don't really uh, know or we are aware of, of that hearing loss. And untreated hearing loss may related to dementia. In the last year, 2014, a study from John Hawkins showed that for people over 65 years old with untreated hearing loss, their brain tissues may be reduced and may lead to dementia or other cognitive impairment. Depression. Because of hearing loss, untreated hearing loss may lead to depression due to uh, social isolation. And um, with that, this is another mental disorder due to, might be triggered by untreated hearing loss uh, disabilities. slide show a very interesting study done by Canada Health, hearing loss, and household income relationship. Untreated hearing loss negatively affects income by as much as $1,000 a month or $12,000 annually. Why is that? Why people with untreated hearing loss, their house income is reduced? Likely because people with untreated hearing loss, they make more mistakes or because of poor, poor communication or be, so they may miss their opportunities, miss their promotion and make more mistakes due to unable to engage everyday communication. So untreated hearing loss not only affect the social life, affect the relationship with others, also affect you family income. Untreated hearing loss also cause auditory deprivation. If you don't use it, for example, if you don't use your muscle, your muscle function is reduced. Same for the hearing. Without adequate auditory stimulation, we lose the ability to process and understand speech. The longer we wait for hearing intervention, the harder it's 
go into further system to cover its loss. At Vancouver General Hospital, sometimes I see patients, they are maybe 70 years old, 80 years old, even 90 years old. And some of them tell me that they don't get any help or any benefit from their hearing aid. The truth is, I tell them, the truth is, sometimes they use the hearing aid too late. Think about it. you have one arm. If you don't use this arm for one year, two years, five years, or ten years, what happened? You lose your muscle function. Think about your hearing. You should have a hearing loss maybe one year, two years, five years, even ten years. And they don't use the hearing aid. And in the end, when they have a severe hearing loss or profound hearing loss, then they said, okay, I want to use hearing aid. It's already too late because in the past, a very long time, part of your brain don't get some stimuli, don't get some exercise. So it's difficult, it's very hard for your brain to recognize speech and the sound. That's why early intervention is always important. So we talk about uh, um, diabetes, connections between diabetes and hearing loss, and what type of hearing loss for uh, people with diabetes, and also the uh, consequences of uh, uh, untreated hearing loss. Let's look at solutions uh, to hearing loss. And uh, first, a new hearing test is recommended. Well, people with diabetes, regardless type 1 or type 2, we recommend have a hearing test annually, at least. And always, early diagnosis, early intervention, to have a better outcome. When you have a hearing loss, what should you do? Or if you are suspect a hearing loss, what should you do? You can talk to primary physician, family physician, or you may even see a specialist, ear, nose, throat specialist. Or you can talk to licensed hearing specialist. It may be audiologist, like myself, a licensed hearing aid practitioners. Uh, in our practice, I always get these questions. I don't want to be seen wearing hearing aids. Um, hearing aids is uh, uh, related to stigma or cultures, and also people really don't want to people uh, see that they are wearing hearing aids. Um, my suggestion is always, hearing aids is just like your eyeglasses. Eyeglasses help you see better, and hearing aids help you um, hear better. Sorry about the, the, the pause. I, I see a question from Sandy. I will answer your question uh, soon when we have the Q and A session. Also, hearing aids, especially digital hearing aids, they are getting smaller and smaller. I'm going to show uh, in the later slides to the, the type of the hearing uh, aids. And uh, always, the hearing loss itself actually more bigger than hearing aids. People, if you don't use hearing aids, people will notice your hearing loss. And studies show that people who wear hearing aids often have a better quality of life. Uh, solutions to your hearing loss. We have new technologies, like smartphone. And I put an iPhone icon here, but also the smartphone like Android system and also other uh, smartphones available on the market. And there are apps available uh, on App Store or Google Play Store. You can download that is amplification, amplification apps. And uh, to try it, smartphone hearing cannot really replace 
uh, traditional hearing aid. They, they are not uh, really uh, like apple to apple. However, a smartphone hearing aid at least give you a chance to try amplification. And the cost-wise, how much uh, cost-effective? Uh, most apps uh, for amplification are under 10 bucks, or uh, some of the email are free. Try. But keep that in mind. Uh, smartphone hearing. Sometimes you need. Uh, we would recommend you talk to your audiologist or hearing aid practitioner when you're setting up the hearing aid. When you set up the smartphone hearing aid. And uh, at Vancouver General Hospital, we are collaborating with uh, ENTs and uh, uh, University of Toronto. We are doing a research on the smartphone hearing aid to see uh, how people benefit from this new type of uh, amplification. Uh, uh, this picture uh, shows the picture show the type of the uh, hearing aid and uh, I'm pointing to one this one is really small it's uh, in the CIC completed in the ear it's really completed hiding in your ear canal it's very it's hardly for people notice that and also one on my on the screen right side this is called behind the ear hearing aid you can see it's really there's a slim tube goes to your ear and uh, the body of the hearing aid is uh, behind your ear. When you choose the hearing aid, you have to listen to your uh, licensed professional uh, suggestions. Um, because different hearing laws, they need to use different type of the hearing aid. There's no hearing aid is, is universal for all hearing laws. For example, one they are completely in your kernel. This is a one completely hiding in your ear canal. It's not, every, it's not good for everyone. So not everyone say, okay, I have a hearing loss. I want this type because it's a smaller, it's invisible. So for some type of hearing loss, the configuration of hearing loss, you probably don't get any benefits from this type of hearing aid. Same for the, this one, the behind the hearing aid. And the, this one is uh, 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 for certain a different uh, configuration of your hearing loss. And also hearing aid, they are uh, something um, that they are, not, they are quite expensive. And uh, most of provinces in Canada, when you try a hearing aid, you get at least a 30 day trial period. It means during this time, if you don't like your hearing aid, or you don't feel benefit from you, uh, any benefit from your hearing aid, you can return them. This is a hearing aid. Well, the last thing is uh, it's a quite a controversial topic now. Uh, hearing aid is a medical device. I always got a question uh, from my patients. They ask me, can I buy a hearing aid online? They may purchase online from the States or from, the, uh, uh, from other places. Uh, in Canada, hearing aid is considered a medical device. I strongly recommend you go to see your local audiologist or hearing aid practitioners to get and fit a hearing aid. And uh, because when you buy a hearing aid online, it may damage your residue hearing if you don't fit it properly. For example, if the output from the hearing aid is too loud, you may, enter, you may get a noise-induced hearing loss and damage your residue hearing. And uh, so I see a uh, Gary's question. And uh, uh, hearing loss due to diabetes affect the balance. That is, I want to answer that question now because actually it's related to my uh, next, uh, next topic. The benefits of the hearing aid not only improve your communication, improve your relationship with, you, uh, with others, and also a study showed that hearing aids can improve your balance function. Our ear it's, uh, has uh, two primary functions. One is for the uh, hearing, that is for the balance. A recent study showed that hearing aids can improve your balance. So that is 
actually just the, the topic I'm going to talk about the, the benefits of the hearing uh, aid. Okay, so hearing aids improve quality of life, effective communications. Hearing loss plays stress on both sides, not only on people with hearing loss, also people around you. So we see so many cases that patients with hearing loss, with untreated hearing loss, they have a bad relationship with others. And uh, I remember a lady told me that his, uh, his frustrating uh, uh, story. She went to a bank, and uh, she, uh, she went to a bank. She's hard of hearing people. She asked the teller, the bank people, to repeat themselves. Just background to no background so noise. And uh, in the end, the teller, the teller just told her, it's, oh, never mind, it's, it's, you know, no, I, I, I uh, um, stopped the communication. So uh, hearing aids can improve communication. And also, hearing aids we talk about is invisible brain exercise to provide some stimulus to your brain and keep your cognitive function. Uh, the relationship with others, we mentioned that. Balance, balance function, just to so answer Gary's question. Yes, hearing aids can help or improve your balance function. Uh, take home messages. And uh, we want people with diabetes, remember this word, ACT, A-C-T. A is uh, get a hearing test uh, annually, once a year. But if you notice, if you notice any significant changes about your hearing, and don't wait, don't wait a year long. Go to see your uh, family physician, go to see your hearing specialist right away, and control your diabetes. Diabetes itself is not a leading cause for these unwanted complications. Surely, management diabetes is a leading cause. So control your diabetes. Follow the guideline published by CDA, Canadian Diabetes Association, and there's a, one is a, a lot of your, uh, information on their website as well. Treat your hearing loss. If you have hearing loss, don't be panicked. Don't wait. Early diagnosis, early, early intervention always give better results. Treat your hearing loss. Talk to your physicians. Talk to your hearing aid uh, practitioners. And uh, give it a shot to try hearing aid. The end of the, uh, my presentation. I really want to. Uh, uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity provided by Canadian Diabetes Association, and I'm very grateful for the help from Sharon, Farah, and Franca. And uh, it's really uh, we want to promote public awareness about diabetes uh, hearing loss because it has been a underrecognized complication of uh, the diabetes. Thank you, Dr. Chi. Uh, we've learned so much important information about diabetes and hearing loss. Um, folks, now it's time for question period. Um, a reminder to uh, type your questions into the large box at the bottom towards the right rather than into the, oh, sorry, to the left rather than into the small right-hand box. And, um, oh, we've got great questions coming on down the line. So. Um, Dr. Chi, is there financial assistance to buy hearing aids if you don't have group plans? And I'm not sure which province this is coming from because we do have uh, various provinces on the line. But how about BC? Uh, uh, in BC, it's also depend. It's possible. Financial assistance is possible in BC. Uh, if you are, are under Ministry Social Service, uh, you will uh, get a free hearing aids provided by governments. And also depends on the age. And uh, if you are uh, uh, teenagers or you are in a, a university, uh, in a, uh, being a student, so you may get some financial aid and in BC. And also in other provinces, and I guess each province, they have a different policy. Yes, it's possible. OK, and how about the, the hearing test itself? 
Is there, is there financial assistance, or does it cost to have a hearing test? Uh, the hearing test itself doesn't really, uh, if you go through your family physician, refer to a hospital, or refer to a community uh, for a hearing test, it's covered by MSP in BC. And also some private hearing clinics, they uh, offer a free hearing test. Thank you. Um, next question. Is it atypical to have hearing loss for lower rather than higher range sounds? And why would this happen? And I guess the, the person saying they're a type 1 who's type 1 has type 1 diabetes, 50 years old, and it's their understanding that in BC it's better to be referred by one's physician to an audiologist. So it's uh, so the uh, first now, the first part, is it atypical to have hearing loss for lower rather than higher range sounds? And uh, why? We see that. We see that very common is uh, uh, people with a lower, lower frequency hearing loss rather than a higher uh, frequency hearing uh, loss. We see that. And the research told that it may be related to genetics. Uh, why would it happen? Yeah. Research show there are also other studies show that, for example, uh, people with uh, Amenier's disease and uh, they uh, tend to have uh, at the very beginning, at the initial stage, and uh, they have a low frequency of hearing loss. Okay, and uh, the remainder of that quest, or actually, this is more of a comment. It's my understanding that in BC, it's better to be referred by one's physician to an audiologist. Can people uh, just go to an audiologist, or do uh, they have uh, to have a referral? Uh, for uh, the Vancouver General Hospital, we need uh, a specialist referrals. And however, for a community audiology, some, uh, you can take a self-referral. And also private hearing clinic, you don't need to uh, refer from a physician. You can just uh, do a quick hearing screening. Hearing screening, it means that you just answer the question, if yes or no. Do you have a hearing loss, yes or no? So you don't need a referral for um, if you go to a private or go to uh, a community. Okay, and, and I guess I missed, uh, it was the rest of the uh, comment was hidden, and it says if one goes directly to an audiologist, one has to pay a fee. Is this correct? So I guess the, the idea is if you are referred by a physician, there's no fee. If you go to an audiologist, there's a fee. Uh, that, that, it, that question is uh, complicated a little bit. It depends if you want to have a diagnostic comprehensive hearing test um, by audiologist. Typically, uh, there's a cost associated. However, if you go to a public funded uh, place, uh, it, it will be uh, free. There's no charge because it's covered by MSP in BC. OK. Thank you, Dr. Chi. Um, next question. Uh, is there a relationship of childhood hearing loss if the mother had gestational diabetes? Oh, that is a really good question. That is a research question. and. Uh, and so far, no research shows that uh, gestation or when the mother is pregnant and high blood sh uh, sugar will cause the hearing loss in, in their, for their child. No study shows that. However, you know, we probably need to do more the research on that topic. OK, thank you. Um, next question, is there a relationship between tinnitus and diabetes? Yes. And uh, I'm very happy, uh, Sandra, for this question. And uh, diabetic hearing loss, they relate, typically they have a high frequency hearing loss. And the one of the uh, symptoms coming with high frequency hearing loss is tinnitus. And uh, people will hear different sounds in their, de in their ears. And uh, yes, uh, there's a strong relationship uh, between tinnitus and diabetes. And also, I want to uh, share the information. The first clinical guideline for tinnitus treatment and management was published uh, uh, last year, 2014. That is the first ever clinical guideline regarding tinnitus. And the hearing aid is the number one recommendation for treatment of tinnitus. OK. Thank you. And um, have there been any, has there been a, any correlation studies between hearing loss and A1C levels? Uh, uh, probably there. I can't really uh, answer that question directly on tonight. But I remember, yes, I saw research. I, I will say yes. I see. I saw research in the past. There's a uh, relationship. There's a correlation. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
Are family physicians trained to know to look for hearing loss among patients with diabetes? Uh, ah, that is a very, very good question. And uh, uh, sadly, uh, no. Uh, I would say and, uh, diabetic hearing loss is still under-recognized. Uh, even for, uh, uh, for medical professionals, and uh, it's, still, uh, it's still unknown for most of medical professionals. So I'm very happy, you know, we have this topic uh, sponsored by uh, Canadian, by CDA, Canadian Diabetes Association. And so we want to make people know about that there's a connections between diabetes and the hearing loss, and you are really high risk population. And sadly, no, family physician. You'll probably share the information with your family physician. Okay, thank you. Um, because diabetes causes high-frequency hearing loss, is there any way to differentiate between noise-induced hearing loss and diabetes-induced hearing loss, especially in the younger population? Uh, yes. I would say likely, yes. Uh, Noise-induced hearing loss and diabetic-induced hearing loss, the configuration uh, can be different. So, yes, likely. However, sometimes it's difficult because they are mixed up together. It's very possible, like teenagers, they have a uh, or people with, with a noise exposure history, they have a noise induced hearing loss and also diabetes, uh, diabetic hearing loss. They may you know, mingle together. And uh, yeah, but likely, yes, you can differentiate uh, these two types of hearing loss because the configuration can be different. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Um, we have a thank you for your presentation. I would uh -huh. like to read. Well, thank you. <laughs> I would I would like to read up on hearing aids improving balance. May I know the name of the study or article? Okay, and uh, I, I can't really provide the, the accurate the study and article, but I can tell you where you can find it. And there's a website, uh, Audiology Online. You can just uh, Google Audiology Online, hearing aid and balance. Also, you can to SAC website. SAC means uh, uh, speech, uh, Speech, uh, Language, and Audiology uh, Canada. Now, on their website, on their uh, article part, you will find this is a quite recent uh, study, and uh, yeah, you should find it easily. Okay, and the next question: uh, Will hearing loss accelerate as a result of type two diabetes? And, uh, sorry, can you? Sorry, uh, Sue, can you repeat the question? Will hearing loss accelerate as a result of type 2 diabetes? Uh, diabetes, uh, is, uh, diabetes and hearing loss, and no, I would say probably just no research for that. Probably the other hand, diabetes uh, triggers the hearing loss. Okay, thank you. And does the reduction in high frequency hearing loss occur evenly in both ears or can it occur in one ear more than the other due to diabetes? Uh, likely, equally in both ears. Okay. Um, now, with regard to hearing loss, uh, does it matter whether the sound is loud, to, that sound is loud in your ears, or whether you're just listening to, if the sound is loud in your ears using hearing, earbuds or if you're just listening to loud music, does it both, do they both have a bad effect on your hearing? Yes, and uh, there's, a, uh, there's a rule you can use that is uh, if you use, for example, if you listen to your iPod, if you use the 50% of the maximum volume, you can listen to it all day long. However, when you increase the volume up more than 50%, so you need to reduce, you need to reduce the, the sound level. And you also need to reduce the listening time. And the most important thing is the, uh, the output, the maximum output of sound level, especially when you use the insert earphones, because insert earphones is closer to your eardrum, and there's uh, actually they use the advantage of uh, the ear canal. So you get a higher level output from the insert earphone. So don't listen too loud. Okay. Um, does hearing loss start first compared to decrease visual loss? Oh, that is a good question. I think uh, there's no research show, show that. It's probably a research we can do in future. Thank you, Alice. 
<laughs> and uh, does diabetes-related hearing loss differ in characteristics or symptoms from other types of hearing loss? Uh, likely, yes. Yeah. Diabetic hearing loss, which typically show uh, like a uh, high frequency hearing loss, you can differentiate um, like it's different from noise induced hearing loss. However, it may be difficult to distinguish uh, diabetic hearing loss with uh, hypercusis or you know uh, age related hearing loss. But for certain type of hearing loss, you can differentiate them. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chi. Um, looking at some slides. Uh, First of all, Doctor, thank you so much. You've you've imparted such wonderful information, and and there are, the participants online are all saying thank you to you. I, they've learned a lot, and I want to thank everyone who attended the webinar tonight, and thank you to the wonderful volunteers who coordinated the session. You'll see that Franca in the chat box has put the post survey survey monkey, um, the link to that. You should be able to click on it, and it'll pop up a really brief survey. We're really interested in what you thought of tonight's session, and, um, and we pay attention to what people tell us so that we can deliver more great programming. And um, there's the Survey Monkey on the screen at the moment. And let me tell you about the upcoming webinars. Um, the next one is on March the 26th from 6.30 to 7.45 Pacific Time. And it's I Want to Be Well, But Some Days It's Hard with Crystal Johnson. And uh, we're looking forward to that one. And for recordings of our previous webinars, they're posted at the link you can see uh, on the screen. And we have new webinar, a new webinar series starting in the spring with all kinds of interesting topics, topics so stay tuned for that. And for more information on our programs and services, in your region, and that covers the whole country, you can go to diabetes.ca. That's our website that uh, tells you about all the events that are happening across the country. And again, our webinar is generally supported by Merck, so we're very grateful to them. Dr. Chi, again, thank you so much. Uh, I wish everybody a good night. Sleep tight. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Good night, sir. Okay, thank you.